Hello, this is Ellie Canal. I'm joined today by Mike Phillips. Uh, and we want to talk to you today about automation and the uh, related airline crashes that have been having, we've been having recently. Uh, so I wanted to actually start with just, uh, what's some of your experience with this in the background? Okay, yeah, the reason that uh, I was interested in being part of this uh, discussion was that my history before uh, coming to the uh, Software Engineering Institute was in the Air Force, and I was a test pilot in the Air Force. Now, during those days as a test pilot, I became very interested in human factors and how human factors play in how you control the aircraft. Now that at the SEI, after having been with the SEI now for 24 years, the interactions have increased so dramatically over the years that the amount of computer involvement is just huge. And we've seen some recent examples of things that seem to be worthy of talking about because it's the interaction between the human and the computer in a situation in flight that makes things very tricky. And I, I don't think most people are aware. To what extent is there automation in an aircraft? I mean, when yes. you're driving a car, you have cruise control, and that's about it. Modern right. cars are starting to get right. automated driving, right. but that's really only the very high end. Don't yes. have, what is it in a typical aircraft? Well, in a typical aircraft, once the pilot uh, manipulates the aircraft, manipulates, flies the airplane, pulls the airplane into the sky, very quickly after that, he turns it over to the autopilot because simply the autopilot is more capable than his hands can be of actually navigating the airplane through the air and even down the approach to a landing. But often the pilot will then take over for that final uh, step of landing the airplane. But in fact, uh, there increasingly isn't a need for that. So we have uh, drone aircraft, in fact, that fly themselves, take themselves off, and land themselves. So the amount of automation is huge now in there. The difficulty that, I, that I'm expressing is that it's the interaction then between when does a human need to be in the loop and when does he not? When is it better to leave it to the computer and when is it better that the, the person takes over? I flash back to those that are old enough to have watched 2001 Space Odyssey where we have the human out in the, uh, uh, a pod saying, open the pod bay door, Hal. And Hal says, no, Dave, you are a threat. That, Dave. Yes, you are a threat to the mission. So this gets to be perilous uh, uh, kinds of considerations. That's very, I didn't appreciate, I think, that the, uh, the, the full scope of takeoff, land, no, takeoff, fly the thing, landing is all capable, even handling turbulence or handling reroutes, the, well, the autopilot can do that? Correct. It, it, it is a matter of getting the correct information for a reroute, but once, once fed to the computer, the computer then does that better, more accurately, in essence, than a pilot looking at material and trying to translate what he sees into a direction. We've, we've managed to make that a, a very nicely automated uh, capability. So we've seen over the past, I'll say decade, a small handful of automation related problems. You know, right. very recently, obviously, we had, uh, we had some, some crashes, but um, even going back a while, there've been, there've been a couple of different types. Are these all related? Are these highlighting a variety of problems? It's a variety of problems, and it's also interesting that uh, from a pilot perspective, you'll hear pilots talk about how much authority they have or don't have, and for a while there was a difference between the two major makers of airlines, uh, as to uh, airline uh, aircraft, as to how much automation was fed in and how much control the, contr the computer insisted upon as opposed to the pilot. So a, a quick example, and I think it's one that tells the broader story very well, it also is from the other aircraft producer, being Airbus, was the owner, the, the uh, creator of the airplane that many of you will remember from watching Sully. And if you recall in Sully, what happened was the airplane was struck by geese. Now, what is not very well portrayed in the movie was that the co-pilot then spent much of his time trying to get the uh, one of the two engines restarted because he had 
a uh, checklist to go through to try to get power back. The reason this became particularly challenging is because the computers associated with the engine uh, in essence said, you pilots don't understand this well enough and we don't want you to do greater damage to the engine by restarting it. So he was trying to get around the system in order to get some power back to the airplane while Sully was working on let me go ahead and find a place to land the aircraft. And to your point earlier, if, you know, if you've had all this focus on human factors in the aircraft, you have to take into account that on the one hand, there are certain things that an automation is actually better at. Absolutely. But on the other hand, when you have a situation that the pilot's better at, you need to be able to con you know, pass that control back to the pilot. Right. And when you don't have that, that's when you seem to get some of these problems. No, exactly right. And so uh, this, is, this is very much about how do the handoffs work back and forth, and how do you make sure there's enough time for the human in the loop to do what the human might need to do to solve a problem that the computer has lost the capability to do better uh, uh, in, for whatever reason. So, in fact, the recent crashes had a particular error in one of the sensors. Uh, I, I would go back and note that there's, for those that become interested in this area, uh, there was a fairly similar kind of uh, accident event in, in a test vehicle called the X-31 where a probe was malfunctioning and the, pilots, uh, the pilot of the aircraft fought uh, the, the system for a while to try to recover it and then, alas, at the end had to eject from the airplane, which could be done in a, with a test aircraft. That's very common to have that kind of... Uh, uh, response, uh, the ability to get out of the airplane. Unfortunately, with airlines, that's not a possibility. Yeah, you really can't do that. So in, in going through and thinking about this, when you have automation that's going to be handling the system, yes. there's an awful lot that it's designed really to handle. So you, know, you mentioned takeoff, piloting, and landing. To the lay observer, that's three things. I'm guessing that when you're taught, you know, as, as a pilot, as someone who's yes. actually dealt with this, that's not three things, that's 3,000 things. There's all these right. tiny little situations. Right. Are there areas, even within the, I guess, the, the, the underneath the greater genre, right, that yes. here's where the human's good at, and in this specific part of it, though, the, the, the pilot's better, the, the automation's better? Well, uh, that's absolutely true. I think we're, we're finding, as I mentioned, because of these drone kind of aircraft, uh, do we lose drone airplanes? Yes, on occasion, they, you know, something happens that they, they crash. But it doesn't have the same uh, result as when we are aware of an airline actually being lost with people involved at the same time. Uh, so there's not a clear answer here. I think that in many cases, uh, the, the notion is that for the everyday operation, uh, the computer is going to be able to do many things better, both quicker and more accurately than a human possibly can. The issue is then when things don't go quite the way it was intended, how many problems might arise. And uh, if we think about risk management, we often find that we do good risk management for a single event and say, ah, if this X, if X happens, this is how we re respond. Uh, there was an aircraft accident that I talk about, which was a uh, military airplane, where before anyone, it turned out there was one fatality in the crash, and there were four different issues all of which had failures. The, the four failures was what finally resulted in someone being harmed because they had enough safety systems that uh, one would back up the next one, et cetera. But by the fourth one, they, they had run out of uh, options. So that, that actually brings me to something like, you know, we're, here at SEI we have a history with CMMI and other types of maturity models for understanding how, 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 well are, how good are we to use improper English, how good are we at managing risk? Yes. And right? how well do we manage right. that? So in a system as complex as this, how, how would you roll some risk management out? 
Well, uh, it's interesting you say that because I, I just, as we got ready for this uh, event, I discovered a, uh, an article written by MITRE, uh, a MITRE team with an Air Force Research Lab uh, person involved as well, released in December of uh, 2018, and it's uh, titled Human Machine Teaming. And with that, they go into some, there's a great deal of information. If someone's working in this area and, and observing this uh, uh, little chat, uh, I recommend that you at least check out that particular article because it talks about ways to, uh, to wrestle with the risks associated. Uh, and, you know, if we, if we put in the, the notion of risk, I'll go back to Sully for another reason, and that is, that uh, in that, you may recall in the movie, if you saw the movie, that uh, the FAA noted that uh, at the time of the, the, the event happening, had Sully immediately gone to the nearest airport to land, they would have been successful. They, in a simulation, they did this. And he said, well, okay, but how about this? We have these checklists that we're supposed to go through to try to recover the airplane better. For example, the restart of the engine. So he said, delay 30 seconds for those kinds of, of interactions to occur between the pilot, the co-pilot, looking at checklists, trying to figure out, resolve what they could do first. That 30 seconds uh, for in the movie was sufficient to eliminate the possibilities of recovering the airplane at a runway and instead made the landing on the Hudson the, the best thing that could happen. And that's interesting because you mentioned teaming. Yes. Or however it goes. Uh, that would be a perfect example where you say his co you know, Sully and his co-pilot were trying to right. restart. Right. You can imagine a scenario as we continue to mature the technology where it's Sully, the co-pilot, and the AI. Yes. And those 30 seconds all of a sudden yes. are reduced to four. Yes. You know, do, go down the checklist, boom, 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 boom. They're right. both watching, monitoring, right. kicking off different events, and the, it still is recoverable in the future. Exactly right. And that takes us to things like Star Wars with uh, R2-D2 being the, you know, right. in the back exactly. seat, in essence. Exactly. The, other, the other pilot that, uh, in <laughs> essence for whatever craft they were in at the time that, that he was doing his thing. But it, it's a good model to say uh, in, in our future state, we are not going to be going back to human only at all. Right. We will not. It just simply is not going to occur. Now, how do we make those interactions work better? How do we make sure that uh, we don't go down a path that precludes the human being able to intervene in a way, perhaps not as uh, uh, adroitly as the, as the computer would do, but save a situation from being catastrophic. Very cool. All right. Yeah, that, that's, that's definitely pretty neat. And I mean, we're not flying X-Wings anytime soon. You can see that the potential for this is really, it's not a joke. There are, no, no. There are automated fire suppression systems, Correct. kind of like you see in R2-D2. There Correct. are automated steering and increase the power. So it's, it's not that... It's not, it's not that far-fetched as it sounds, um, minus the sound effects. So, you know, what, what kind of, as we're going to build more of these systems, yes. and, and this is something that you've been thinking about a lot, you right. know, what kind of message would you say, here's how you have to think about this in the development? Yes, the, the part of the issue that I wanted to, to try to elaborate on a little bit, uh, it actually goes back to another fascinating movie of uh, the Russians were ahead of us. This was a Clint Eastwood movie, and uh, the Russians were ahead of us in the design of one particular vehicle. Uh, Clint Eastwood gets assigned to go steal it, and he gets in the airplane, and then he has to remember what the Russian word is that will enable him to command the vehicle to do the right thing. And that in itself is part of the issue that we've got to be very cognizant of. Often we assume that if we design a system so that, let's say, the pilot pushes a particular button in order for something to happen, that of course that will be easily done. Well, will the pilot remember which button? Will, it, will he remember that he has to hold the button down for three seconds for it to work to avoid just an inadvertent uh, operation, et cetera? There's too many things that are involved in the interactions that often get 
a particular designer thinks that someone is going to understand, but in the, at the end of the day, they won't. I had a particular situation myself where uh, in my very young flying days where we were starting down the runway and there was a problem on my side and the word that I needed to tell the pilot to do was abort. That's the word that he will then pull back the throttle. I couldn't remember the word. <laughs> so we went faster than we needed to until finally the word came abort and he did and we we got the brakes hotter than we wish we had because right. of that just... simple delay. So time delays are one of the, the ways that we can see this. Inadvertent operation of the wrong uh, situation and those that drive know the, the phenomenon of, gee, I thought I was hitting the windshield wipers, but instead in this car, this rental car that I'm in, it's positioned differently and I hit the light switch instead and that's worse and etc. When I was first starting to drive, I remember I was on the highway, parked in a line of traffic and I meant to merge out, slammed uh -huh. on the gas instead of the brakes, smashed yes. into the car in front of me yes. and that cost my parents quite a lot of money when yes. I was a kid. And it's yes. exactly that. That's exactly you mean to that. do this, you do that. And yes. it's just a momentary issue. In that case, thank God no one was hurt. Yes. Um, but it's the exact kind of mistake that you that people, especially folks who are brand new to whatever the situation is, right. very frequently make. Right. Well, cool. Go ahead. Okay. No, it was just that that's the, 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 the part of design that's very difficult is to make sure that you're considering what the, the uh, individual that you're trying to help is going to do. And in the uh, MITRE study, as an example, they said, get groups of three or four because no one is going to be sufficient uh, to to give an answer that everyone is going to do it the way that that person the way that person is going to think it through cool yeah. thank you very much well thank you very much for joining us for more information please check out the links in the description this has been mike and ellie thank you for watching if you guys enjoy what we're talking about and you want to hear more uh, get notified of each scsr product episode by clicking the subscribe button below um, also, if YouTube's not your thing, um, each episode is also available on the Cyber Talks pages on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and I never get to do this, but you can also check us out on SoundCloud. So thank you guys, and again, hit the subscribe button below and, and get notified of every new Cyber Talk episode.